Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas. Our ongoing study in Joseph Butler and the analogy of religion. Our last lesson was our transition lesson, so uh, we are going to have our first lesson in part two of the analogy of religion. We're going to be looking at the first lesson of revealed religion. It'll be pages 124 to 150. And we're going to take a look at uh, the true, the way, and the life. We're going to look at revealed religion as the true, the way, and the life. Let's begin with block one and take a look at uh, Christianity as inwardly true. And uh, Christianity posits the infinite reasons behind the constitution of nature. Christianity offers beneficial assistance to the natural religion. The law of reason in nature displays the principles of theism. Furthermore, the tendencies of reason in nature display the dispensation of providence. We learn that from analogy. But these tendencies ask for human participation. The light of reason and the light of revelation both require human submission to their authority. They both posit the ought of existence, the moral ought of existence. The light of revelation informs the light of reason to define the dispensation of providence. And that is a providence that we are to be in submission to and realizing that the uh, the tendencies within the light of revelation and reason posit the ought of existence. Christianity is the promulgation of the law of nature as it's a making public aspect. It also posits the circumstances of advantage that are to be taken up. We are to take, it, uh, take up these tendencies that point to the coming realization of the kingdom in revealed religion. But Christianity, as we discussed before in the last lesson, it is the republication of natural religion. Christianity posits the circumstances of advantage to be taken up as the tendencies toward kingdom. Believers are to practice promulgation and enforcement of Christianity. That becomes the concrete external manifestation of the practice of Christianity. We are to take up the high obligations, says Butler. We are to posit the beneficial future state as a schema. We are to posit the beneficial future state as a schema of providence. As a schema of providence. So Christianity does posit the infinite reasons behind the uh, laws of nature. It does uh, inform natural religion with its revealed religion and uh, Christianity is a republication as the providence of redemption in note 3. Christianity posits the account of the dispensation of things by positing the recovery of salvation for all of humanity. Christianity posits the recovery of salvation for all of humanity. It does enlist the scriptures and it does enlist the rite of baptism. Reason conveys revelation as the Father's relation to humanity. And it also conveys the relation of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Revelation also conveys the obligations of duty, of moral duty. So Christianity does posit a threefold truth. God is governor of the world. Christ is mediator between God and man. The Holy Spirit is sanctifier. That's the triune truth that Christianity posits. I'll say it again. God is governor of the world. Christ is the mediator between God and man. And the Holy Spirit is our sanctifier. Creator, mediator, sanctifier. We posit a triune Aletheia truth. 
Now, the Note 4 is important because Butler tells us that the Christian religion has a twofold aspect and structure to its redistribution. Internally, Christianity posits the true. It internalizes the true of Revelation. But then it has to go out of itself, so externally it posits the real. Internally, the believer will uh, hold within themselves the truth of Revelation. But we are to go out of ourselves and posit that which is the real in reality, that, it, that which is the real which is concealed and needs to be brought forward through actualizing tendencies. We internalize the true, we posit the real. The inward principle, the inward true is the inward principle of the heart and mind, where natural religion refers to God the Father, revealed religion refers to the Son and Spirit. The concept of relation mediates the high obligations. The Son and the Spirit take on the aspect of the dispensation of providence as mediator and sanctifier. Out of our relation to the Son and the Spirit evolve the precepts of obligation. And he gives us the terms, the concepts, reverence, honor, love, trust, gratitude, fear, and hope. Seven precepts. There are seven precepts of virtue. For Butler, there are seven precepts of virtue that we learn from Scripture through the mediator Christ and the sanctifier of the Holy Spirit. Honor, love, trust, gratitude, fear, and hope. So that's the inwardly true that we hold as an uh, at a conceptual a conceptual level. We hold the inwardly true of revelation that has been disclosed to us through the mediator and open to us through the sanctifier. But we have to pass through the mediation of Christ to posit this internal truth as a positing in externality, as a positing of the real in ministry. The Bible calls it praxis in the Greek. It's the Greek term praxis, action and reflection. In reality, it's called praxis. We call it the positing of ministry, but it's the positing of the real, says Butler. But before we can do that, we have to pass through the mediation of Christ. In block two. So in block two, lordship is prior to the positing uh, of the externally real. We have moral obligations toward Christ. We are informed of something new concerning the state of humanity and something new concerning the governing of nature. Judicial punishments are the consequence of disregarding Christ's lordship. The assistance of spirit is necessary to renew human nature. We must be born of spirit. Spiritual benefit is acquired through participation in the appointed ends and the appointed means of future state, which we see as tendencies that we need to take up. So this all pertains to participation in note two. Experience alone does not convey the means to spiritual benefit. Revelation is needed, says Butler, and there are deductions from Christianity, and they are. The moral precepts are seen rationally, and positive precepts are not seen rationally. So what he says here, basically he means that moral duty arises from nature itself, but positive duty arises out of external revelatory command in the gospel. So we are informed by the gospel of revelatory truth concerning the moral duty that we have, and then we need to posit that duty externally. So, note three, pausing the externally real. External scripture enjoins every moral virtue. Internal moral law is also innately written into our own human nature as conscience. So you have external truth in scripture, but you have an innate conscience that you've been given, which is that uh, creation in the image of God. You have a conscience, subjectively, but objectively you have revelatory content of Scripture. And the stress in Christian religion is moral duty, says Butler. 
Out of the command of Christ comes the obligation of positive moral act. Expresses a proverb, I have mercy and not sacrifice. And for Butler, he says that means mercy rather than rigid observance or legalism. So we have a moral obligation of mercy, not rigid observance, not legalistic rules, but instead the fluidity of mercy. Moral duty rather than rigid positive duty. And justice is to give way to moral duty, or in other words, to kayasune. And he says that he wants to take up Hosea 6 and Matthew 7:7, 7, 7, where it says, Let us return to the Lord who will raise us up. Egai will raise us up. And, and that way we seek and find the Lord who will raise us up and enlarge our moral faculty. The self is to search in the scriptures and determine the schema of revelatory providence. Remember, in our previous lesson, Butler says the conscience has a capacity for moral enlargement. It has been created with a capacity for an innate capacity for moral enlargement. Remember that concept of moral enlargement in a previous lesson. We, in, we engage in that process through knowing progressive learning, searching scriptures, the revelatory content in scripture, in order to uh, learn the schema of the revelation of providence and to uh, enlarge that moral faculty of conscience. So we have the inwardly true precepts of honor, love, trust, gratitude, fear, and hope in Christ. We pass through the mediation of Christ who empowers us through scripture and conscience and we're ready to go to block three and posit the outwardly real. And note one, natural governing is a miracle of creation. The analogy of nature reveals that God created the world and that he invisibly governs the world through Christ as Christian schema. And he judges it through dekaiosune righteousness or dekaiosune justice as Butler translates it. This governing lordship proceeds through the influence of spirit upon humanity. It's not graspable without revelation and revelation is given through the doctrine of scripture. For Butler, revelation is given through the doctrine of scripture which discloses the revelatory gospel of Christ. Now moral governing is a report of tradition. The visible is enclosed within the invisible governing. Miracle is proof of divine providence. We appeal to the report of tradition and when humanity was created, there was also given the moral exertion of power. The moral exertion of power was imparted in creation at the moment of creation. In other words, a moral revelatory process was inaugurated at the very birth of creation. And it unfolded in an exertion of revelation. So the unfolding of revelation is disclosing the initially imparted moral exertion of power that was imparted to creation at the very moment of creation. So note three, real natural governing and real moral governing equal the real confirmation of divine governing or providence. There was revelation at the very beginning of the world. Revealed religion confirms natural religion in actuality. The revelatory religion affords humanity the truth of nature that needs to be internalized and reasons from analogy confirm both revelation and an analogy will confirm miracles. Revelation is confirmed through analogy. Miracles are confirmed through analogy. Revelatory content is confirmed through analogy. So the light of reason and the light of revelation have an analogous relationship and we are to take up the revelatory content of scripture and enlarge our faculty of conscience and thereby through the mediation of Christ posit the true that we have internalized internally and go out of ourselves and posit it as the real that needs to be actualized. 
And so we need to take a look at this process a little bit more in column 4 when we take a look at Revelation as Scripture. Revelation as Scripture. Before we do that, let's take a look at our recap triad at the top of column 4. Conscience of the true internalizes the seven divine precepts of moral conduct revealed in Christ. Honor, love, trust, gratitude, fear, and hope. Two, the revelatory lordship of Christ unveils the obligation of moral praxis. In other words, it seeks to enlarge our capacity of conscience. And then we can move on to uh, block uh, to three. Revelatory conscience and the light of reason posit the schema of providence. The light of revelation behind the light of reason, behind the movement of nature, informs our schema of providence that we posit as the real that needs to be actualized in actuality. So let's take a look at the notes in column four. Number one, moral governing is a schema. God governs the world and instructs humanity according to the laws of nature and the faculty of reason. Additionally, Scripture instructs concerning the schema of providence. So there's your um, governing by God. It is through laws of nature. It is through reason, but it is also through providence disclosed in Scripture. Therefore, this is key, God in instructs through Natural dispensation, revealed dispensation, the two together make up the schema of providence. So providence equals natural dispensation plus revealed dispensation. Both make up the schema of providence. So let's take a look uh, at note two, because in this process, the natural dispensation is suspended because of the prioritizing of the revealed dispensation. Natural dispensation is learned through reason and experience. Humanity is ignorant of the expected new knowledge of revelation or how revelation will now affect the natural dispensation. But we do transition through the mediation of Christ into the note three revealed dispensation disclosed in scripture. Language mediates this revelatory content and its ambiguities. But we take up the concept of resemblance or analogy. There is resemblance between the light of nature and the light of revelation. That's why he takes up the way of analogy. And then we take up the process of continuance and enlargement. The self is taken up into a continuance of learning and the enlargement of moral faculty through the process of moral perfection. Christianity is about a process of moral perfection for Joseph Butler. He is a philosophical moralist. He is a British moralist. We're looking at 18th century British moral philosophy. He is a moralist. Christianity is about the process of moral perfection. It is about creating habits of virtue and it's about um, enlarging the faculty of conscience and it's about positing the schema of providence in order to bring this moral perfection of the kingdom forward. That's what his philosophy is all about. It's all about the validation and the authentication of Christianity through the way of analogy and that way of analogy points to the mediation of Christ it points to the uh, revelatory content of Scripture and by taking that historical look back through tradition we will unveil that progressive unveiling of revelation content but Really, a recall triad, if you really want to take a recall triad up, it, it can be summarized as uh, the true, the way, and the life. Block one is the true. We begin with Christianity internalizing the inwardly true of the revelatory content in Christ. We pass through the way, the mediation of Christ as Lord, before we posit the real, or the life, the real life. So your triad for recall could be the true, the way, and the life. It reflects that uh, statement from Christ, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But he puts it in the order of the true, the way, and the life. The inwardly true, the mediation of Christ, and the outwardly real that is posited. And that is exactly the framework that Joseph Butler wants to 
have us understand as the very first lesson of part two on revealed religion. It gives us a triune methodology right in the first lesson. Your triune methodology for a moral philosophy is beginning with the inwardly true, moving through the mediation of Christ, and positing the outwardly real. So that's going to wrap up this first lesson of part two of the analogy of religion.